property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Are you looking to get away from it all? Enjoy life again? Then Apollo Charter Tours has just the ticket for you. Come fly with us, and in three short days, all your cares and worries will be a world away. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Come, join us for an out of this world lunar experience. Yeah, I just took a leisurely trip. <laughs> Everything you need has been provided for. Expert pilots and technicians, in-flight food and beverages, entertainment, spectacular oh, 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 views, craters, and of course, the best golfing this side of Pluto. That looks like a place to me, Al. All for only $25 billion. And if you act now, We'll throw in two hours of free Lunar Mobile Rental to really get you going. Call now and reserve your seat in the capsule. Apollo Charter Tours. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Consider the eclipse. It's just about the most mysterious celestial event possible for early humans to witness. So of course we attempted to explain them with mythological cosmology long before we had any real science to throw at the mystery. One of my favorite mythological takes on the eclipse is the Hindu god Rahu. Now he's not the oldest eclipse deity, but his story and iconography are wondrously gruesome. He was once a proud Asherah, but hey, he wanted immortality. So he drank the divine nectar. But before the drop passed his throat, all-powerful Vishnu decapitated. The power of the nectar made his disembodied head immortal, and so he continually seeks his revenge on the two planetary deities who ratted him out to Big Vish, the sun and the moon. As such, ravenous Rahu regularly ascends into the sky and attempts to swallow the sun or the moon. But since he's disembodied, his meals fall right back out his neck stub. There you go. Eclipse is explained. <laughs>
On August 21st, 2017, the shadow of the moon will pass from the west coast to the east coast of the U.S. Our blue sky will turn black as night and fill with stars, and there will be a hole in the sky where the sun used to be, surrounded by the fiery ring of the sun's corona, a total eclipse of the sun. This will truly be a historic event. Accounts of solar eclipses date way back in the written record. The early Mesopotamians wrote that the sun was put to shame during the solar eclipse of the 14th century BCE, and it may have started the sun worship of the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten. Ancient Chinese astrologers paid with their lives if they failed to predict a solar eclipse and portend the fate of their emperors whose symbol was the sun. The earliest date of a specific event in human history, a battle between the armies of Lydia and Media, occurred on May 28, 535 BCE, when a solar eclipse caused the soldiers to lay down their arms and declare a truce. So, how does it happen? During a total solar eclipse, the moon moves between the earth and the sun. When this happens, the disk of the moon appears to perfectly cover the disk of the sun, even though the sun is much larger than the moon. But how is this possible? The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but by sheer coincidence, the moon is 390 times closer to Earth. Size and distance cancel each other out so that the moon and sun appear to be almost exactly the same size. Every time the moon orbits the Earth, once every 27.3 days, it has to pass between the Earth and the sun, a stage called the new moon phase. And every time it passes, the new moon has a chance to block out the sun. Most of the time, the moon passes a little above or a little below the sun, but if they align perfectly, the shadow of the moon will make a narrow path across Earth, and those in the shadows will see a total solar eclipse. Just like on the night side of the Earth, the sky during a total eclipse is black and filled with stars. But, while the moon perfectly covers the surface of the sun, it doesn't block out the sun's outer atmosphere, its corona, which appears as a fiery ring around the dark disk of the moon. Solar eclipses occur several times a year, but most often they are partial eclipses, where the moon doesn't quite line up with the sun. And, when the moon and sun are perfectly aligned, the moon is usually too far from Earth in its orbit to completely cover the sun, creating an annular eclipse. During an annular, or partial eclipse, the sky remains bright. Even on those rare occasions of a total eclipse, the moon's shadow is most likely to fall on the 70% of Earth that is covered by water, and few people, if any, will see it. The eclipse of 2017 will be remarkable on a larger scale because the moon is slowly moving away from Earth. If a furry ancestor of ours had bothered to look up during a solar eclipse 100 million years ago, it wouldn't have seen the fiery corona of the sun. It would have just been dark. Eventually, the moon will have moved too far from Earth to completely cover the disk of the sun. It is only during our little wink of Earth's history that the moon is at just the right distance to cause a total solar eclipse, yet not block the sun's corona. So, on August 21st, 2017, when the moon exactly lines up with the sun and the moon is close enough to the earth, its shadow will cross the U.S., and, if you happen to be in its narrow path, you will witness one of the most awe-inspiring sights in the universe. But, as incredible as this event will be, total eclipses are one of the most dangerous as well. Only specially tinted filters, specifically designed to observe the sun, should be used. The eclipse might put the sun to shame, but even a shamed sun can seriously damage your eyes. 30 feet, two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Oh, the moon is amazing. Oh, well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Hey, keep moon gazing. See ya. <sighs> Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Rolling. Action. again. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna get a lot of altitude. Pretty loony, huh? See, people used to think that if you slept, I gotta start over. Sorry. Oh, here, I got an idea. Let's make it real straight. Pretty loony, huh? See, loony, lunatic, lunacy, and lunar are all from the same word, the word for moon. People used to think that if you slept outside under a full moon, you were crazy. I've slept outside under plenty of full moons. Do I seem crazy?